Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create scenes with layers in it um, using a PSD file from Photoshop in Cartoon Animator 4. So we're going to kind of compare the Photoshop file, uh, what it looks like in Photoshop and what, what uh, the scene will look like in Cartoon Animator and the similarities uh, to those two methods and how you can import as a scene. Okay, and do some animation a little bit later on as well. Okay, so right now on the screen we have this uh, Photoshop file. You can see there's a number of different items here in the uh, the layer tab. We have things like this uh, this mine hut. Okay, you can just kind of move that around to, to wherever you want. You can see they're all on different layers, one in front of the other. Okay, there's a little mine trolley here. You can move that around the tracks. Um, things like this cactus up here. Um, so all these items here are on uh, different layers, like this rocks too. And there's also a background as well. So the background is obviously in the very back. Um, and that's what the background is going to look like when we take it away. And here it is when we bring it back in. Just control Z that and put it back into position. So that's, uh, you know, the basic layer structure. Shouldn't be too difficult uh, for most people with a, a basic Photoshop knowledge to grasp here. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that same PSD file, this one right here, and we're going to bring it into Cartoon Animator. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and find that file, which is right here. It's called Hell's Creek. This is a PSD file provided to us uh, generously by Warwick Hayes. And what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag the Hell's Creek PSD file, and we're just going to Alt-Tab over to Cartoon Animator and click and drag it in. Now we have the option to import it as a prop as a scene or as a freebone actor. Uh, we're going to choose scene because that's the focus of this tutorial and it's going to import in as a scene. And we'll just uh, zoom into it here. You can see in our scene manager on the right we have all the different items. The cactuses, okay, the rail tracks, the same mine trolley right here. We can you know move that around and uh, the same, uh, where is it here, the mine hut, okay. And again you can click them as well on your on your uh, scene view on the stage mode here. Uh, you can click and drag them around, around and uh, there you go. Okay, just to kind of emphasize this, I'll take this over here and we'll just uh, compare it to our uh, Photoshop uh, project here. So if we zoom in a little bit on the pro, uh, Photoshop project, and you can see stuff like here, mine trolley, mine trolley. Okay, they're both selected. Um, you can move them around just like this. Control Z that. Move this one around. Um, basically the same thing. Okay, so the layers import in uh, essentially the same way in uh, Cartoon Animator 4. The uh, the layer order here in the scene manager will be a little bit different, but this layer order doesn't matter because it's actually um, just organized in a random way here. Okay, so little rocks, mine hut, and uh, stuff like that. Um, so what I can do now is I can just close down uh, Photoshop. We don't really need it open anymore. We're going to do all of our editing now in Cartoon Animator. Now, of course, in Cartoon Animator 4, you can manipulate your props. You can rotate them and scale them if you want. So, for example, if I take this uh, mine hut here and I mouse over the edge of the selection box, I can click and drag and make it larger. And you'll see the values up here uh, for width and height of the scale uh, change. And those will change um, in tandem because we have, uh, we're using the... Uh, uniform scale here, okay? And you can select the number here to scale back to 100, so it'll be uh, back to uh, the regular size. If you have this red lock uh, function enabled, that'll do the same thing for height and width simultaneously. So you can take it down to 50, you can take it down up to like 200, and uh, get all sorts of uh, different results, depending on how much depth you want in your scene. Okay, you can also rotate things and move them like this trolley. I can move it into the tunnel there, just move it around. I can uh, rotate it. Do, 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 like that. Okay, and if I want to re retain the original rotation value, I can just enter zero up here on rotate, and I forget the uh, initial position it was at, but probably something like that. Okay, and uh, there you go. So that's how you can really just, you know, simply manipulate manipulate the objects in Cartoon Animator. Uh, what we're going to talk about now is layering the objects. We're going to kind of simulate depth in our scene by bringing certain objects to the forefront of our z-axis. So there's an easy way to do this um, in the regular stage mode. Uh, you'll see a little icon at the, at the bottom of every selection box. You'll see a little kind of icon. It looks like the two arrows here that I'm mousing over right now. If you click and drag that uh, back and forth, that's going to move items back and forth along the z-axis, okay? And uh, if we want to take it back to the regular value, we can just, you know, control z and do that, okay? 
You can see here, we can do that same thing. Um, the, Z, the, the Z value will change up here. Just keep that in mind. You can bring it way up here. And uh, we probably don't want to do that. So let's take it back to zero. Okay, and press enter. Now, notice that if I go back and forth with my camera here um, throughout my scene, let's zoom in a little bit more here. Um, we're not going to have much of a feeling of depth. It kind of looks a little bit flat, you know. Despite certain items being in the foreground, there's no uh, parallax effect, which is sort of a simulation of depth in a two-dimensional scene, where certain items will be closer to the scene and others will be further away. Everything seems to move through the camera at the same speed. Okay, so what we're going to do to fix that is we're going to add some depth to our scene by moving certain items forward and certain items backward. Now, the best way to do that is to go up here and use your 3D view. Okay, so once we click on 3D view, we have the option to hold the Alt key and left click and drag to, uh, you know, uh, pan back and forth just like this and right click and drag to rotate around our scene like this. We can orbit our, uh, our view. And what we can do from here is let's take about a 45 degree angle so we can kind of see things from, from this direction here. And I'm gonna move items that I want to be more to the forefront, closer to my camera. I'm gonna move those forward on the Z axis simply by selecting them like cactus foreground right here. And I'll move it like way up over here, all right? Maybe move it a bit closer to the middle of the scene there. And we'll take this little cactus and move it up as well. Okay, I also want this mine hut to be further up. So let's click and drag that, you know, somewhere up here. And uh, we'll take the, let's see, the rocks. We can bring those a bit forward as well, just like this. Okay, these two uh, big old rocks. Bring those forward at different positions. And our smaller miscellaneous rocks here, we'll kind of put those in the middle, I guess. And then we have items like these boxes. We can put those even further off, further off in the background, okay? And, uh, you know... Things like the, the background itself, we can, you know, take the background a bit further back as well. Um, however, because we have a little bit of a complex situation with our mine here, um, to simulate the, the cart actually going into the mine, there's different layers to the mine. Um, I'll show you here if we just zoom in a little bit. You can see we have this part here, which is mine mask. That's the front of the mine right there. So this is the part the cart's going to kind of go into, all right? You can see it doesn't have a, an edge here. It's just using this edge as part of it. And so essentially this mine mask and this other mine here, this one right here, uh, uh, not the mine mask. Yeah, the mine, uh, yeah, this is the one, the background has to be on the same Z value, okay? Uh, now we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna actually take those both back. So I'm gonna take the mine mask and move it back to zero on the Z axis, okay? Um, and we can, you know, take the mine trolley and if we move that mine trolley in, it'll still go in here, okay? Um, we can, you know, take this a little bit further up, just slightly, maybe like this. Um, we just have to make sure the perspective doesn't uh, get messed up. So let's just do a value of maybe like one here, okay? And then this is a value of zero, so it would actually go behind the mine. And, you know, we can take these cactus and do whatever we want with them in the back, though. Okay, so what I want to do now is go out of 3D view and show you the difference in uh, the parallax perspective. So if I zoom in really close, notice that when we, you know, um, let's take this, uh, this a little bit closer to the middle here. When we, now when we pan through our scene, we sort of have a depth effect where the things in the forefront seem to be passing the camera faster than things in the background. And that's, you know, simulating that uh, 3D depth effect. Like this, uh, let's take this little, uh, Cactus, cactus here and bring it even closer maybe. So we can have something like this, okay? So we have three levels of parallax. This cactus is in the forefront and mid-range is this uh, hut here and the background is in the background there. So you'll notice that they'll all pass the camera at you know different rates and that's where you get that sort of uh, effect, okay? And you can see the rocks here. Uh, maybe we can move this one forward a little bit just like this. Okay, this one should be in front of the rope there. Okay, so something like this. There you go, and you can kind of see the effect there. And this front cactus, of course, will be a strong simulated effect as well. So we'll kind of bring this up like this way. Okay, and you can see the different values in uh, how different items move throughout your scene. So that's called a parallax effect, and that's how you can simulate a sort of 3D depth in your two-dimensional scene. Now, if you want to change your camera settings, you can also go into uh, project settings down here. Also use the control shift P hotkey and you can change the, your, the perspective of your lens. Okay. Um, 
make sure that you're in perspective mode here, okay? And the perspective of your lens is going to change the effect that you have that your parallax effect has. And we can talk about that in separate tutorials. But uh, the main thing to um, focus on is make sure you do not have orthographic view because if you have orthographic view selected, it's going to nullify that parallax effect. It's going to nullify and put everything essentially on the same uh, Z value. So you won't get that, uh, that same effect. So we're going to go back to using the perspective camera and 150 millimeters, which is our original there. And uh, press OK. All right. So essentially nothing will change. Yeah, we still have that same uh, cool parallax effect. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna apply a couple of animations to our props and our scene. So we're gonna go over here to our uh, Elastic Motions tab under uh, Entrance Elastic Motions, and we have a special G3 Elastic Motions content pack you can purchase from the content store. Uh, I'm just gonna go over here to the Scale folder. There's a whole bunch of different ones you can apply in here, uh, including this Open from the Bottom. Okay, so we're gonna have our cactus, our cacti, appear on the screen uh, with an elastic motion. So let's just go ahead and apply Open Bottom to uh, all of our cactus there. I'm going to take them back uh, to uh, frame one each time I do this, just so they kind of open simultaneously. All right, just like that. And we're going to take this one back to the beginning as well, and maybe we'll do the same thing over here. And you can, you know, have them pop in at separate times if you want, but I'm just going to have it all done simultaneously just because I think it looks kind of cool and freaky when all the cactuses appear at once. Okay, so we have all those cactuses appear at once. And let's try to apply an animation to our uh, our trolley here as well, okay? So I'm going to select the trolley and we'll do an exit animation for this one. So we'll go to exit here and we'll go to uh, the same elastic motions there and move. And there should be a stutter stutter rate uh, animation here. So let's go ahead and uh, apply it. Let's move, move a little bit further down here and just kind of stutter right here. Just apply that. So he's going to shoot off into the wrong direction there. No worries. Let's just go ahead and press F3 and go into our timeline. And if we have object related track selected, and we have our trolley still selected. That will be that will appear on our uh, our timeline. We can also go to C Manager and find it right here and use an automatic selection, object related track selection right here. And if we go into our motion track, we're going to find the motion clip. Okay, for that uh, um, elastic motion, we can scrub through it and you can see the effect right there. Not what we want. Okay, going the wrong direction. So let's right click on it and select el Elastic Motion Editor. Okay. And what we're going to do is we have the mode selected as exit, and it's, that's going to show us exactly where the exit position is for this um, little uh, scooter thing, trolley thing, whatever it is, okay? And we're gonna click and drag that blue box, and we're gonna move it somewhere over here, okay? Since he'll be, uh, and we're only midway through the animation right now, so it'll be, and we're only midway through the animation right now, so it'll kind of just be, uh, oops, let's just uh, do that again here, right quick. And Elastic Motion Editor, that box, maybe something like this. Okay, and then what's gonna happen is we'll have it kind of just boom, boom, go, go gadget trolley, all right? And it'll pop it into the uh, the mine shaft right there, okay? Uh, pretty simple stuff. We have other tutorials that go into a lot more detail on that if you'd like, all right? And uh, last things, last but not least, let's go ahead and do some camera animation, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to uh, frame one and we're going to go ahead and select our camera record mode. Okay. So this means we're actually recording our camera animation. Okay. So I'm going to just click that. And what we want to do is we want to set our begin, our starting position here. Okay. Which is going to be about here. Just make sure that your whole scene, anything that you want to be recorded is within this red, uh, outline here. Okay. So in this case, we're doing just fine. Okay. Now let's play back. You can see our uh, cactuses pop up. And then maybe um, as the trolley goes in, we can uh, zoom in really quickly and zoom in on the mine shaft and something like that. Okay, so we play back. You can see. Get ready. Boom, there he goes. All right. This is a very simple and quick uh, camera animation. And of course, there's more detailed animations on, uh, or more detailed tutorials rather, on camera animations uh, in our learning center as well. But that's really all I wanted to show you. Kind of some cool things you can uh, do. Uh, you're able to now import in scenes into Cartoon Animator 4 as PSD files. Uh, and you can the, basically the layer, uh, the layers and the layer tab in Photoshop will be uh, the exact same as the layers that you have or the items that you have in your scene manager. And you can manipulate those layers. Uh, you can manip manipulate them, rotate them, scale them, and move them around on any axis that you please. 
So that's really all I wanted to show you guys in this tutorial. So thanks so much for watching and hopefully you learned a lot as always. Uh, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and I hope to see you in the next video.